Since we just addressed the downfalls of credit card security, definitely have to talk about how to avoid possible pitfalls when it comes to keeping your cryptocurrency secure. So we're going to teach you how to do that. Cryptocurrency security. Something important to notice about blockchains, it's a unique mix of transparency and privacy. For example, the details of transactions are almost always public. You have that long running ledger complete with digital receipts. It's a lot of transparency. However, addresses are pseudo anonymous. Addresses are a long string of text uh, that is used to send you cryptocurrency. So these addresses are just jumbled long strings of text and it's impossible at first glance to decipher who exactly is doing this transaction. However, with some detailed history and multiple transactions, people have been able to figure out who have been behind certain Bitcoin accounts, certain addresses. So the solution for this is to, if you can track lots of, if you can ultimately pinpoint someone's identity based off several transactions conducted by one address, how do you avoid this problem? Easy, use multiple addresses. One thing that Satoshi specifically laid out in his original white paper introducing Bitcoin was that the more you use an address, the less privacy you have. Using, uh, reusing addresses, possibly a new one for every transaction, gets you as close to, anom uh, to being completely anonymous as possible. The cool part about this, it sounds like a hassle creating a new address each time. There's actually certain wallets known as HD wallets uh, that will actually create multiple addresses off of the same master password or private key. One more thing about privacy uh, and blockchains, there are specific blockchains that are very focused on privacy. Monero, for example, um, Zcash has privacy aspects. And these projects basically are prioritizing pr uh, privacy over transactability or transparency, um, which is their specific choice. They are designed to remain as private as possible. So a lot of the details of these transactions might not be public. So where do you store your cryptocurrency? Places called cryptocurrency wallets. What exactly are cryptocurrency wallets? In order to fully understand what they are, cryptocurrency wallets, you've got to address public and private keys. We've actually already addressed public keys. Another word for your public key is address. Just a long jumbled string of text that you could provide to anybody to send you funds. Uh, every public key is derived from a private key. Private key is exactly what it sounds like. It's your master password to all of your crypto. If you have your private key and are the sole person that has your private key, you are the sole controller of your cryptocurrency. However, if that falls into the wrong hands, well, that person then controls your cryptocurrency. So these two aspects make up parts of a wallet. And both are just long strings of text, long jumbled strings of text. Best analogy for public and private keys probably be a mailbox. So anybody can come in, drop a letter into your mailbox, your public key. However, you are the only person with the key to open up the back of the mailbox and get that mail because you are the only one with your private key. Like I said, private keys are long jumbled strings of text that are uh, practically impossible to memorize. So seed phrases have been introduced. And these are just alternate representations of your private key. Instead of just one long jumbled string of text, uh, you might have 12, 18, 24, depending on the blockchain, uh, words to write down. And these words act as your private key. So if you lose your private key, you essentially lose control of your cryptocurrency. Same thing with the seed phrase. If it falls in the wrong hands, it's the same as somebody having your private key. They can restore your crypto on another wallet then steal it. So you have a couple types of wallets, custodial and non-custodial wallets. Custodial basically means that somebody else is taking care of your private key for you. They're managing, uh, they have the ability to manage your private keys, which also gives them the ability to manage your funds. However, 
if somebody else has your private key and something goes wrong, there might be recourse to get your funds back. Um, Non-custodial wallets are the exact opposite. Nobody gets your private key except you. The downside of that is if you lose your private key, you're out of luck. You probably just lost your crypto. We recommend using non-custodial wallets because if you are not the sole controller of your cryptocurrency or of your private key, you do not solely control your cryptocurrency. Let's just ask Andreas Antonopoulos. Simple rule. If you control the keys, it's your Bitcoin. If you don't control the keys, it's not your Bitcoin. Your keys, your Bitcoin. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Your keys, your Bitcoin. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Your keys, your Bitcoin. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Your keys, your Bitcoin. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Your keys, your Bitcoin. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Your keys, your Bitcoin. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. So Andreas is a leader in the Bitcoin community. He has actually written a book called Mastering Bitcoin. That's absolutely great advice. Not your keys. You don't have control of your crypto. This goes for exchanges too. Um, exchanges are a good place to get cryptocurrency. A lot of people purchase cryptocurrency from online sites called exchanges. The problem with these exchanges is they often are managing your private key. Uh, and that has caused some problems in the past. Some exchanges have been hacked and, lo and users lose all of their funds, even though they're not the one managing their private keys. So again, if you are the sole controller of your cryptocurrency, you don't have to worry about this happening. Sole controller of your private key, you don't have to worry about this happening. If you're not, well, your crypto might be compromised eventually. So looking at the seed phrase right here, I mentioned that you could restore your cryptocurrency. And one of my favorite things about cryptocurrency compared to other payments uh, options like cash or credit card, let's say I lose my wallet. Lose my wallet, wallet's gone. Dropped it, don't have it. I just lost everything in that wallet. Let's say I lose my cryptocurrency wallet. My phone gets wiped or computer. I didn't lose my funds as long as I have the seed phrase. I can restore my funds using the private key or seed phrase in order to, again, recover my funds simply by downloading a new wallet. Why is this? Well, technically, your cryptocurrency doesn't live in your wallet. It just stays, it stays on the blockchain. Your wallet acts as a tool to reference the blockchain and manage your cryptocurrency. So really, you're just restoring your funds from previous uh, data recorded in the blockchain ledger. So a lot of times, or a lot of wallets when downloading them, they'll prompt you either to create a new wallet and which they will give you a seed phrase or your private key if it's a non-custodial wallet. Uh, there is also another option, which is to restore your wallet. And those are the same words that were on our seed phrase. Just type that in. It's like you never lost your funds or never lost your cryptocurrency wallet. You got a new one. 